I'm Hazel. It's Saturday today, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WOW news of the week, what I have been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week, we found out ahead of time what the entire trading post for August is going to look like, which might help you make your shopping decisions for July. So we now know what the fill the bar reward is. It is this cosmetic back piece with a target on it. There are also some Horde and Alliance kind of like faction swapped themed mounts. We have the Corcoran Nightsaber and the Sentinel Warwolf and a variety of other transmogs, including a pair of pink butterfly wings. I don't know about you, but I'm down to 15, like 1-5 tender after uh, shopping in July, and that's with a pretty expensive thing frozen, so I don't know what I'm actually going to do with this information, but there it is. Other things going on this week, something that jumped out at me from beta reporting this week, Coppers the Kobold is a new pet coming in the War Within, which is notable because it can serve as a vendor and a repair NPC. If you can get this pet, you would never need to beg for a Jeeves, Auto Hammer, Yak Mount, I guess if you want to like fix your transmog and raid, but um, there's plenty of situations where you might want to repair your gear or vendor things and you cannot mount up, and this will be a fantastic asset to have in those situations. From the sounds of the reporting by Wowhead, actually getting coppers is going to be a fairly involved process that does take some doing in the War Within, but it will be well worth it to be able to get the bag clearing on the go in any area that you cannot mount. I'm imagining making more room in my bags on transmog runs in like big underground instances. The main thing that I do not know about this yet is whether or not those vendor and repair services are on a cooldown as we have sometimes seen in the past. I haven't seen one mentioned, so I'm hopeful that you can just repair your things and sell things to him whenever, but that is the one thing that I'm not quite sure of yet. Other things in the pipeline for the War Within, shamans are getting a raid buff. All specs of shamans will be able to provide the Sky Fury buff to their raid in the War Within. Sky Fury provides all the benefits of Wind Fury Totem to the entire raid, so you don't need to worry about shuffling around Wind Fury groups anymore, as well as a 2% buff to Mastery. If your raiding guild does not have at least one shaman in it, this might be the excuse that somebody needs to look into it. There have also been loads of other class notes and changes and updates in the beta recently, so if you are interested in keeping up to date on what they're doing with your class, it's always worth kind of like tabbing through the beta notes and scrolling to your section and reading to see what they're doing. I used to have the stamina for that kind of thing, and recently... Things change so much during development, and I have a lot of faith in people that are better at my class than I am to provide the feedback that is needed. So lately, I've just been kind of showing up on, you know, like pre-patch day and then looking at my buttons and going, wow, what's this? <laughs> wonder what this one does. But my utmost respect to everybody that keeps in closer tune with what is going on in their class. As far as what I've been up to this week, I have started, against all odds to, my, to myself, uh, gearing up a second character in Remix to earn even more weapon transmogs. I got nearly all weapon transmogs on the Hunter, there was just a couple of stabs left, and then I thought, well, if I need stabs, I could farm those on a priest, and then I could also get, like, wands and maces and offhands and daggers and stuff. So I've revived my very first remix character, Smelly Shellfish, and I've started gearing him up to be able to farm those things, and, like, farming them along the way while gearing him up. I did not think that I was going to want to upgrade a second character in Remix, but with the bronze buffs, it's not that painful to do. You can gain power fairly quickly, so it's been kind of fun. I'm definitely not going to get everything, but it is something to do while waiting for prefetch. And then a question for this week. Irchi asks, do the profession tools from Dragonflight carry over into the new expansion? Is it worthwhile to finish upgrading all of my tools before the expansion, or will I need all new tools? Inquiring gnomes want to know. You will need all new tools if you want to be doing the new professions. Profession tools give bonuses in their expansion's profession skills. So if you for some reason wanted to go back and efficiently create Dragonflight things, then you'd want to hang on to your Dragonflight profession tools. But you will need new ones that have Kazalgar skills and bonuses if you want to be making Kazalgar things, which is our new The War Within profession um, label. Each expansion seems to be quite self-contained in that respect. You'll be getting new tools and earning new knowledge and starting off on a clean slate at the beginning of the War Within. So it will not matter whether or not you've done anything in Dragonflight. You're going to be on the same page as everybody else if you start on the first day of the new expansion. And that has been the week. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions for a news video that I might be able to answer, please pop them in the comments and include the word question to help me find them. I appreciate you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.